as I've been introduced, I'm Neve, um, and I'm here to talk about why we need to talk about diversity in tech. So, a bit about me. This is pretty much eight years ago to the day I was stood right here, having done a visit to CERN in Geneva, um, and speaking about our trip there. Very much more nervous than I am now, and quite a lot has changed since then. So, after leaving Fallabroom, I went and studied computer science at the University of Birmingham, um, having done no programming whatsoever up to that point. And there, I think there were a grand total of maybe five girls out of 120 or so in the class, just in that year group. So quite an intimidating environment, but that is changing, which is ace. So since then, I've worked at a number of different mobile development agencies. So I write the code behind mobile apps, so the things that you use on your phone um, make them look nice. So I've worked on apps such as Chester Zoo, Times, PlayStation, Channel 4, um, and most recently Monzo. So this is like an app-based bank um, that all lives on your phone. Um, and I also rep represent Google internationally, speaking at conferences um, and sharing knowledge in that way. So yeah, these are some of the pictures of the places that I've got to visit. I've been to California last weekend. Um, I get to go to the Google's co worldwide conference every year. Um, I mostly speak at a lot of conferences around Europe and generally spreading the word around diversity in tech or more specific knowledge sharing. So in terms of diversity in tech, in order to understand a bit more about that, we have to go back in time a little bit. So if I were to ask when was computing invented or when did computer science start, I would imagine a lot of you would think maybe 50 or 60 years ago. However, it's a lot older than a lot of people realize. This is someone called Ada Lovelace, who is often credited as one of the founders of computer science. In 1843, she came up with some of the first computer algorithms using what's called this analytical engine, as they called it back then. And obviously, throughout the next 100 years after that, women were quite the pioneering forces behind that change. This is Rear Admiral Grace Hopper. In the 1950s, she came up with the first ever compiler in her spare time, just outside of her normal work. And she coined the famous term of debugging. So this is basically the process all coders know of finding an issue in your code and that might be causing something to look wrong or not work properly. And this was because they found, so back then, to do computing, you had pieces of paper that had the code written on it or like pr printed on the code, on the paper even. And the issue was that a moth had got stuck on the paper and had stopped the computer from being able to run the code properly. properly. So that was where the term debugging came from, and she's the one who came up with it. Also, in terms of other areas, women were quite crucial to the space race in the 50s and 60s. There were a lot of women behind the scenes developing the algorithms and the processes, the power management tools, in order for us to be able to get to the moon. And this gets forgotten about, It'll, there'll be a lot of movies where it's just, you just see a lot of men. Uh, but there are hundreds of women in the, behind the scenes that were instrumental to this work. So, what happened? So, up until about the 1980s, women were just as much a part of computer science as men. However, you can see here, from that point onwards, the number of women studying computer science dropped dramatically. This is an example in the US, however, it was the same across the globe, really, especially the Western world. And the main, there are quite a few different reasons for this, but one of the main known ones was the advertising industry. So around the time of the 80s, personal computers were becoming much more of a thing, so they were much more, became accessible to normal people, and also, in the industry, computing was becoming less of a clerical task. So in, previously, women were seen as the natural computer workers because it was seen as just a menial, boring job. However, as those became, the computers became more powerful and they needed to, like, had to be used in order to do the work that all these companies were doing, these jobs were being replaced by men and given better job titles, better pay, and the women were just moved to the side. This was reinforced by adverts like this, so pretty much all the personal computing adverts in the 80s, 70s, 80s, 90s, even now really, it's not perfect, were men working on the computers, this one here where the woman's doing the washing in the background. It was very much reinforced that 
Computers were for boys and not really a thing for girls. The video game industry as well. So um, Nintendo, Sega, all of the original ones, they were all advertised at boys, all the TV adverts, for example. So that doesn't really encourage you as a young girl to get into that field. So why is it actually important? Obviously, you have some fields that are more that might have more women or more men or certain types of people, and that's fine, but in the technology industry, it's quite a unique point where we're building products for everyone. So the apps that I've designed we, or developed, we're trying to make it so that it works for every single person in this room. So in order to do that effectively, you need the right set of people making those products so you have the right perspectives. It's not just gender diversity either. You've got things like neurodiversity, accessibility issues, so if you've got a disability, being able to use the apps, um, socioeconomic, um, and the list goes on and on, really. And the research shows that this does create better teams and generates more money for companies, which is mostly all they're interested in. Um, so a quick bit about the future in terms of where we're going. It is improving. It's getting much better. Since I went to university, that proportion is slowly coming back up to those levels we saw in the 1980s. Um, you've got things like Boston Dynamics making ro cool robots. Um, Tesla's self-driving technology, that's becoming more and more popular. In the next 10 years, we could probably see the way we drive quite dramatically change. And in the terms of the phone industry, you've got fold foldable phones. We'll probably have phones that are adaptable and change into laptops. You have everything in one device. And yet, in terms of specifically in the UK. The tech industry is probably one of the fastest growing industries in the whole um, sector. Um, salaries are much higher than average. The growth, there's more jobs than there are people studying for it in university. So you never really have to worry too much about that. And we really need people like you here to get into it and give those different perspectives that you might have. So I want you to go away and think, Imagining a world in like five to ten years where we're building all these cool new products, but they're actually being designed and developed by exactly the right set of people who are actually using it. So everyone's getting exactly what they need, and it's working for them in the right way. Yeah. Thank you very much.